or it'll be um, Chuck gonna have it up anyway. Victory in Jesus. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on cavalry to save a place like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. Come ye sinners, poor and needy. 323.
Praise the Lord. You know, that's something I plan on doing one of these days, arising and going to Jesus, you know. But also, I, I know this, that today I can arise and go to him. And on every, every occasion of life, I can go before him. For he walks with me, and I'm thankful for that. Good morning, Central Hatchie. I hope everybody's doing good. Happy Father's Day. I hope everybody's having a, a good Father's Day. By the way, uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, we were at the... Uh, 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 Southern Baptist Convention this week. Thank you for the opportunity to go down there and spend some time with some other brothers in Christ. And uh, I was I was very well pleased in the way the convention went. It was a it was a great time uh, down there. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, was able to see the overwhelming majority of the Southern Baptists voted uh, that uh, uh, deacons, pastors, elders. The Bible stated clearly that it was to be a man holding that position. And uh, it also, uh, they uh, uh, designated, a res had a resolution, and they voted and passed it, uh, confirming that the belief of the Southern Baptist Convention is that God made it a man and a woman, a male and a female. Male. There was no, no difference. I mean, there wasn't no middle ground there, so to speak. But anyway, the votes were overwhelming, and you know that has those issues there have uh, 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 caused a split in many of uh, larger denominations of late. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the woke side, are wanting us to buy into that, but the overwhelming majority voted uh, uh, as Southern Baptists uh, holding on to the conviction of of, of the Word of God, uh, just uh, being truth, and uh, I'm thankful for that. But anyway, it was good to be able to go and uh, turn, take your Bible with you, with, if you have it with you, and turn with me to John chapter number 16. Um, John chapter number 16, as we were in it last week, it was a great uh, a passage of Scripture. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's told his disciples uh, uh, as he's coming down through there about how the world, if the world hates you, know that it first hated me. We talked about that in 15, uh, uh, starting in verse number 18, of how that the reason it hates him is because he, uh, his lifestyle, his teachings, takes away the cloak for their sin. Their sin can no longer be hidden. And uh, we wonder sometimes, we even talked about it this morning in the deacons meeting, why is it that the world just hates Christians so much? And it's because uh, their sin is revealed through the life of a Christian and uh, conviction comes because of their sin, and nobody likes to be convicted of their sin. So the world hates us because of that. And Jesus told his disciples that over in uh, chapter 15. But then in verse number 16, he, I mean chapter number 16, he says this, These things have I spoken to you that you should not be offended. In other words, uh, uh, the word offended there means uh, to be made to stumble. Uh, if, if we uh, would listen to what he says and uh, we would be aware, we could be prepared, we'd be ready. Uh, and if and when, not if, not if, but when these things happen, we could be ready. If you're ready uh, for the fight, praise God, you, you, can, you can fight a good fight. Amen? And uh, so with that being said, he says, I told you these things that you wouldn't be offended or you wouldn't be caused to stumble. And in verse, chapter uh, 16, verse 2, uh, he goes on and tells them that they're going to put them out of the synagogue. Now, we see that happening every day, people trying their best to uh, uh, quieten the, the voice of the Lord that's coming from the pulpits all over America and all over around the world. In verse number 3, it says they'll do this uh, because they have not known the Father nor me. They don't know him. They're not saved. Now, he was talking about the religious crowd there last week as we talked about that. Uh, we talked about there's a, a religious crowd, those that are holding on to some similitude of faith, uh, uh, but their faith may not very well be in the Lord himself, but their faith very well may be in all sorts of different things. They, they're religious, but they're not righteous. They're religious, uh, but they're not uh, following Christ. He said they don't know me and they don't know the Father, okay? And then we go on down, we move right on down into verse number 7. After he has told them these things, he said, I told you that the time will come. Well, it, 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 we see in that happen. And in verse number 7, it says, Nevertheless, 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of the world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Brother Vic, curse the Lord, please. Amen. You know, there's a passage of Scripture over there that says that we are to be filled with the Spirit. And I've made the statement over the, over the time, and I believe it to be true. It's good to be filled with the Spirit, but the problem is that I leak. Amen? Somehow or another, I don't stay filled with the Spirit all the time. If I could stay filled with the Spirit all the time, I could walk in His way and, and not stumble. If I could stay uh, 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 in, 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 in with the Spirit just uh, full uh, of my, uh, uh, occupying my whole being, then I, would, I could stay in good shape. But I have trouble... Staying full of the Holy Spirit at all times. As Jesus is writing to his disciples here, and uh, uh, writing to you and I, and he's talking to his disciples, he is telling them, uh, he's just told them that he's going away, and he says, you don't even ask me about that, but you are sorrowful uh, for me going away. And he's just told them, he says, I go, and sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I'm going to tell you a truth. And he wanted to reveal them the truth about his going away. And right behind that, he said this. And I want you to grab a hold of this. If this is good, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. He says, it is expedient for you that I go away. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm walking and talking with Jesus, I think that's a good thing. Amen? If I was walking down the road and I could see him face to face, I would think, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it couldn't get much better than that. I believe if I could walk and talk with him and see him, how many times have we prayed for God to show up? How many times have we prayed and said, Lord, just show, reveal to me what you want me to do? How many times have we longed for the Lord to come back and receive us unto himself. We do that all the time. But there's something that's better than walking with him along the path that the disciples walk. You see, it's even better for us that, than being in his physical presence. Is, what is better for us is the fact that the Holy Spirit of God comes in and occupies our soul when he went away. If Jesus had never went away, we could have never have had the Holy Spirit abiding within us. For before then, what happened? The Spirit would come upon a man and it would go off. It would come upon a man and it would go off. But after Jesus left, he sent the Comforter back that he might indwell the believers. So when we say that he indwells believers, many people wonder, say, well, why does he indwell a believer? Well, we need to understand what the work or the ministry of the Holy Spirit is in the life of a believer. Well, Jesus gave a clear, clear revelation of the Holy Spirit himself. If we were to look at uh, John chapter 14, verse 15 and 16, uh, he gave a clear revelation that the Holy Spirit was coming. And now in this passage that we're reading today, he reveals the work of the Holy Spirit. There's four things that the Holy Spirit will do when he comes and he takes up occupancy within a heart of a believer. My friend, number one, he will help believers. When the Holy Spirit comes in and resides, he'll start to help us. The second thing that he will do 
when the Holy Spirit come, He will convict the world of sin. The third thing He'll do is He will guide the believer. Uh, and the fourth thing He'll do is He'll glorify Christ by showing the things of Christ to believers. So let's start number one with verse seven where it says uh, that the Holy Spirit comes and comforts believers. Let's look at it. Nevertheless, I tell you a truth. I want you to see this. Some people don't know if this is truth or not. Well, let me tell you something. If Jesus said it's true, it's truth. You can carry it to the bank. Amen? You don't have to wonder about it. He said, I tell you a truth. In other words, it is expedient, it's profitable, or it is advantageous for you that I go away. It was to the believers an advantage that Jesus would leave this world and send the Holy Spirit back. He said, I'm telling you the truth about this. Though it might be hard to understand, might be hard to believe, as they stood there that day, it was without a doubt the truth. Many of us, it would seem, like I said, it would be a whole lot better simply to be in His presence. But He says the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is better than being in His physical presence. My friends, let me tell you something. When uh, that Spirit occupies our heart, it has the ability to control what we think, what we do, or at least affect what we say and do on any given moment. When we are just physically in the presence of someone, usually they influence us, but not near as mightily as something that indwells us. See, the Holy Spirit comes in. It dwells within a man. It doesn't come on him and go off. It is advantageous for us that he dwell within us. When we look at there, he says down there, it may be difficult for us to understand what he's saying in verse 7. Many people cry out for his presence, but, friend, it's important for us to beg for his indwelling of the Spirit. You know, as some of those old brothers and sisters that like to uh, believe that you can give someone else the Holy Spirit. I know that uh, there's many of them uh, believe that, that, that uh, the Holy Spirit is given by the laying on the hands of the Presbytery. Well, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is sent from God. It's not given by man. It is sent from God himself. You say, well, what's the, pro what's the point in the laying on of hands as the Presbytery did? Well, that is an affirmation of, through the touching, the Bible says what two agree together touching in this world, binding on earth will be bound in heaven. Friends, that's what it's all about, that laying on of hands. It's a, it's a confirmation, if you will, and of a picture of the Holy Spirit working through the life of all the believers coming together in uniform, uh, uniformity uh, together. Now, look what it's going to say. It said, I go away. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. If Jesus had not never left, he would not have ever sent the comforter. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he comes, he will reprove the world, look at this, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Let's think about this. If he, if he goes away, he's going to reprove the world. The word reprove means to convict. If he goes away, he is going to send the comforter, and when the comforter comes, he is going to reprove or convict the world of sin. How many of you remember the day that you got saved? Do anybody remember the day that you got saved? Let me tell you something. You don't get saved unless the Holy Spirit of God draws you. You don't get saved unless you come, first of all, I believe, unto the place to where you are convicted of your sin. Unless you come to the place where you realize your sinfulness, you'll never receive the free gift that he so, 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 so much wants to give to you. You must be convicted of your sin. You don't just say one day, say a little prayer and say, Oh, Lord, I, I'm going to trust in you without ever being convicted of the fact of, uh, of your sin. And to be convicted of your sin means that you have all of a sudden realized 
just how, how, how in opposition to the way God created you that you're actually living your life. It means that you start to, uh, the repentance for sin means that you start to see sin the way that God sees sin. Uh, uh, but, but the Holy Spirit's job is to convict you of that sin, that you would see that it, your way is sinful. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought I was a pretty good feller before I got right with the Lord. Amen. Until I got right with the Lord and the Holy Spirit started to convict me, I was a pretty good feller. I could cuss like a sailor. I could drink a little bit. I could act like a hellion. I could do all of those other things. And I thought I was a good old boy. I was a good old boy. But my friend, my life was littered with sin. It took the Holy Spirit to come in and to convict me of that sin before I ever seen. That's why so many people in the world uh, will tell you when you go knock on their door and invite them to come to church, they'll say, well, preacher, I'm as good as everybody else down there. The problem is, is they've never been convicted of their sin. You see, the only difference between a person who, 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 who is in the world and a person who is in the church is the people in the church have repented of their sin. They've been convicted of it, and they've repented of it. You say, well, everybody that sits on the church pew has convic been convicted of their sin. I didn't say that. But everybody that's a believer, a true believer in Jesus Christ and convicted and part of the true church, my friend, has been convicted of sin by the Holy Spirit of God and when they get convicted of that sin and they repent of that sin then they become children of God friend unless you're convicted of that sin you will never ever be where you need to be in Christ there's a lot of people out there in this world today that believe everything's all right with them. They're going to church. They live every Sunday. They're wearing the hinges out on the door going to church. But my friend, until you've been convicted and repented of that sin, you're lost and headed to a devil's hell. I don't care who you are. Amen? Amen. Boy, I tell you right now, that was something else. Praise God. But listen to what he says. First of all, he went away and he convicts the world of sin. In other words, you're over there just a few verses over. Jesus said, know that they uh, hated me because uh, 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 I removed, and I'm, putting, I'm paraphrasing, it was because he had removed their, 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 their hiding place for their sin. They had dropped the cloak of their sin. But let me tell you something more important had they, than dropping the cloak of their sin to the world. It's the fact that it had dropped the cloak of their sin to themselves. They had come to the place to where they could see their own sinfulness. My friends, I'm going to tell you what. When a person is under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, they'll get sick of their sin. My friend, when the Holy Spirit shows up and gets on you, let me share this with you. I ain't going to say, I ain't going to get too detailed. I'm going to talk generalities. But I, I remember even since I've been saved, I can go to do something and, and maybe even sometimes do it anyway. You know, sin is that thing that you know that you do, that you know you shouldn't do, that you just do anyway. And then the Holy Spirit convicts you of that sin. I'm going to tell you right now, it has absolutely made me sick on more than one occasion the fact that I allowed myself to go off off into sin again. I don't know, y'all Y'all probably had never sinned none since y'all got saved, have you? Amen. But that Holy Spirit will convict you of that sin and it will make you sick of your own sin, my friend, if you're there. you got to see what you said. Now, I want you to see this now. In, we're going down through you. He said, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I'll send him to you. And when he's come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness now I want you to know this he is not going to come and to convict you of your own self-righteousness though he may point you out he's not I, mean, I, I said that wrong he is going to come and convict you of your own self-righteousness see that Holy Spirit well uh, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to humble ourselves before the Lord amen Isn't that what we're supposed to do how many of us have a tendency to have a pride about our spiritual relationship with God. A lot of people do. A lot of people think that they're all that in a bag of chips because they have a relationship with God. All of a sudden, they look down their, their providential nose at the world, looking at the world and saying, oh, look at that sinner. Look at that. Well, I don't, for the grace of God, you'd been in the same shape they was. You was a sinner. You was lost and undone. You walked in the same sin, and we still have sin in our life today that's unconfessed. We're no better than what they are. Friends, let me tell you something. 
The Bible says that he will come back and reprove or convict the world of righteousness. It's not talking about the righteousness we have in him when we have cloaked ourselves in his righteousness. We put on his robe of righteousness, but he will convict us of our own self-righteousness. There's a lot of us that have, that have a tendency to walk in our own self-righteousness. And we'll also walk around with our own worldliness uh, 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 thoughts toward righteousness. We, we have self-righteousness. We have human righteousness. Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, we, he will convict us. There's a lot of things out there that the world says it's okay. That this, is, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. We just had that debate just a few days ago about, about uh, 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 women preachers. Uh, down at Southern Baptist Convention, when we was passing that, when we was talking about, when we was talking about uh, the the uh, deacons and the elders uh, in the church uh, about uh, the Bible's pointing uh, uh, distinctly that it was a job for a man. My friends, I want you to know this: uh, uh, the world says, "Well, it's okay for a woman to do that," and it also goes on. And the world looks around, and the world says, "Hey." Homosexuality is okay. They couldn't help the way it was born that way. But what does God's word say? God's word and his way is righteous says that it is not. Is a word. God's word says it's an abomination unto man. Uh, I mean unto God. And my friends, I want you to know this. We cannot deny the work of the Holy Spirit as a fact. He will come and he will convict us us of human righteousness the, the mindset of the world he will convict us when the way of the world says this is right and the word of God says this is wrong he will point that out there's things that we do today that the church didn't used to do I'll be honest with you we didn't used to have air conditioning did we Jerry praise God we used to sit on a hard plank bench didn't we there ain't nothing wrong with air conditioning amen there ain't nothing wrong with a hard plank bench there ain't nothing wrong with soft pews. But my friends, there's a lot of people. I won't never forget this. We built a bathroom in the foyer of the old home church where I was raised. When we done that, half the church left. They shouldn't have a bathroom in the church. My goodness, everybody goes to the bathroom. Amen? I mean, they wanted to act like it was some kind of spiritual thing. Holy Spirit didn't convict them. It was their own humanistic ideas. And the Lord will convict and he will point out when we follow in human righteous only. My friends, I want you to know this. It is important for us to know that the work of the Holy Spirit will be to convict us of sin and to convict us of our own self-righteousness and human righteousness. Righteousness, the works that are only human, will be pointed out. When we think that this is good enough, He'll point it out that it's not sometimes. Now look at this. Then he goes down and he says this. He says, Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. He will convict the world of righteousness. Why? Because his life reveals it and he has sent the Holy Spirit to do a work in our lives to confirm what he wants us to go by. Look what else he says down here in verse number 8. He says, When he's come, he'll reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. What judgments is he talking about? What he's going to do? He's going to convict us of judgment. What judgments? Well, there's a lot of us uh, that need to realize that he is going to convince us and show us the judgment that he has upon Satan. Now, I want you to understand this. A lot of people want to follow ways of the devil. I bet y'all didn't know that, did you? A lot of people want to follow the ways of Satan. For instance, I want you to know this. The way of Satan in the church might be not to die to oneself. If old Satan can just uh, convince you that you are okay just the way that you are, my friend, you have a tendency to follow your own ways. That goes right back to that self-righteousness idea again. But my friend, I want you to know, he will show us the judgment that he had upon Satan and following Satan's ways. 
that Holy Spirit will show us just how wrong things are. My friends, not only that, but look what else it does. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged, that's that Satan, but also he will point out other things in judgment. He will confirm. See, that work of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin, to convict us of, of, of righteousness, and to convict us of the judgment of Satan. But it's also, there's another word that we can throw us in there, and it can convince us of sin. What is the difference in convict and convince? It can convince us when we're about to go in a direction that we know that we're not supposed to go. The work of the Holy Spirit is to lead us and guide us. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And, and as a matter of fact, he says in another place that he's a, a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. The light at the end of our path reveals to where we are going, where we're headed. We're headed toward eternity. But the lamp at my feet illuminates every step that I am to make. Who illuminates that? It's the Holy Spirit of God that he's talking about. He's sending back to us here in this passage of Scripture. He is going to convince us of sin and the fact that he is going to lead us not to go off into sin. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a situation where maybe that, that something was taking place or somebody was saying something and, 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 and you know what? You had an opinion on it. You heard what they said and you had an opinion on it and you just felt like that you just could not stand it if you didn't speak into the situation. Anybody ever been there? Man, I have. But all of a sudden that Holy Spirit shows up and it talks, uh, spoke to your heart. And God always speaks to me through scriptures, okay? And then one of the things that he, uh, he, one of the scriptures he likes to use on me a whole lot is not to sow discord among the brethren. Most of the time, when Mark's opinion boils up into my mind and tries to leak out through my mouth, most of the time it's Mark's opinion about a situation. And I know for me to do it, most of the time it would be adding fuel to a fire. You understand what I'm saying? And so I have to be reminded by the work of the Holy Spirit for me not to enter uh, into the situation. I don't need to speak into it. And he convicts me of it. You ever been, you ever been convicted of it before you've done it? I have. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. He convicts me of it before I do it. I'm going to tell you right now. Sometimes. That redneck mentality, that old devil that still rides up on this right-hand shoulder of mine, he still says, oh, it's all right, just go ahead. They deserve it, amen. You be doing God a favor. You remember a while ago he said they'd put, I mean, when we read the scripture the other day, he said he's, uh, he'd, he'd get put out of the, out of the synagogue. Uh, you remember that? My friends, I want you to know something. And uh, the ones that done it, they felt like they were doing God a favor. If you go back and read it, it said that's what they were doing. Sometimes I feel like I, if I could just speak some mark into that, that I'd be doing God a favor. Holy Spirit says, you better bridle that tongue, boy. You better bridle that tongue, boy. Look what he said. else it says, and we're going to hush. Here's what it says. Of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. Friends, let me tell you something. He'll judge us even before we say it, even before we do it. We'll know if we're walking in the Spirit as they sent that comforter to us and we're walking in that Spirit, He is walking with us when the very thoughts come into our mind to elaborate and do things that we shouldn't do. As a matter of fact, there's another scripture that says this, that we are to bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. Y'all remember that verse? Bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. That means if I think about going over and punching old Casey, I need to do something with that thought. Casey might whip me, amen. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got to do something with that. I know it's wrong to do such things. So that Holy Spirit's convicting me, and I'm supposed to bring Well, what does God's Word say about that? If somebody's speaking evil, you know, they say in ministry you have to get thick-skinned. You know somebody's off out in the edges and they're talking about you. And you know what I want to do? I want to go out there and say, well, bless God, let me tell you right now. 
But you know what? The Bible tells me that I shouldn't do that. And I'm convicted of that. And, I'm, and he shows me that. And it's important for me to let the Holy Spirit work within my life. You know, Stephanie, that used to go to church here. Y'all remember Stephanie? Stephanie Warren? Little old Stephanie Warren, she was about that big around. And, and, and I'm going to tell you what, she's still about that big, about that big around. But I'm going to tell you what, she used to be just a bean pole. But you know what she started doing since she's got married? She's gone to go into the gym. And her and that, uh, her feller goes to the gym. Her husband goes to the gym all the time, and they work out and everything else. And I seen Stephanie not long ago. And old Stephanie's got muscles where them little skinny, scrawny arms used to be, you know. They muscles on them arms and them legs. She was a uh, pair well, you could see them. She had them, uh, uh, what you call them things that the nurses all wear, scrubs. She had scrubs on, they was tight. And as she walked down to there, you could see the muscle in her leg as she walked. My friend, used to them little old legs, she'd wear them short britches up here, and they wasn't but little, two little bean sticks stuck up in her. And uh, all of a sudden, you know how she got that way? going to that gym, exercising those muscles, and those muscles has become strong. I seen her, she, she was in there the other day, uh, I seen a video of her. She put, she put about three weights on the end of this dumbbell, and, and she reaches down and she grabs that dumbbell. I wouldn't have wanted to pick it up, ain't no way. But she reached down and she picked it up, and she pressed that thing on a video on, online. Friends, how did that little scrawny girl that went to church here come all the way up? We watched her grow up as a kid. How did she wind up with the muscles and, 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 and be able to lift such weight? i tell you how she did it. She exercised her body. Friends, when we exercise the work of the Holy Spirit within our hearts and within our lives, we'll become strong in Christ. That's what he's trying to tell the disciples there that day. He's trying to tell them. He says, look, guys, you need to exercise your faith. You need to be prepared. You need to be ready. That when all these things, they're going to try to put you out of the synagogue. When all this other stuff is trying to help, you need to be ready. And you need to be ready by exercising your faith. He didn't just say the Spirit was going to show up and do it all. But what was he going to do? He was going to convict us. He was going to convince us. He was going to do a work in us. But my friends, in order to do that work, we've got to allow that spirit to be exercised within our own life. And if we don't exercise, what is, how do you mean exercise, Brother Mark? That means when that Holy Spirit nudges you to call somebody on the phone, you don't call the preacher and tell him to call him. You do it yourself. That means when he, can, he, he, when he, when he nudges you, that Holy Spirit nudges you and says, hey, you know what, you need to be at vacation Bible school, or he nudges you and says, you need to do this, or you need to do that, then you need to get up and do it. That's what you need to do. When that Holy Spirit leads you, and by the way, you say, well, how do I know it's the Spirit leading? It lines up with this old book up here. If it lines up with that old book up there, then you follow it, and you'll grow strong in your faith. He went away because it was it was a benefit. It was advantageous to us for him to go away. Because now we can walk in the Spirit. So maybe you here today or you watching online, and you know what? You hadn't been ex exercising that Spirit, walking in the Spirit like you should. Maybe you need to get back under that spout and get filled up with that Spirit again so that he might walk with you fully. Maybe you just need to surrender to him for the first time. Whatever you need to do, right now is a great time to do it. We have an opportunity this morning to say, God, I hadn't been walking in the Spirit. I hadn't been following what you said for a step. I've, I've been so far away, I hadn't even heard his Holy Spirit. Maybe you need to be like David and pray and ask God to, to give you back the joy of your salvation. And I believe that joy of our salvation comes through the being filled with the Spirit of God. Whatever you need to do right now as we in this place, in just a moment, we're going to have a song. You just do whatever you do. If you're watching online, just take a moment right there, right where you're at, and ask God to do a work if you can. Stand your feet all over the house. Heavenly Father, as best as I know how, I delivered the message you gave us to deliver. And Lord, I am thankful, God, that when Jesus, when you came, Lord, and you walked among men, and when it was time and it was expedient for you to go away, that you did send the comforter. I'm thankful that you did send it. May we be faithful now to let that spirit 
your spirit who knows all things from you let it guide us each and every day walk with us talk with us be real in our life and may we be faithful with that what we know in Jesus name amen all right as the song plays maybe you need to come maybe right where you're at home you need to pray for whatever you need to do y'all so much for being here today i pray that y'all have a great day for the fathers thank y'all uh for all that you do uh happy father's day we love you uh be praying for the sunday school teachers and all for our sunday school and then be praying for our 11 o'clock service thank y'all for being here anybody anything before we dismiss okay join yours be best today. All right? Nothing else. Casey, would you dismiss us? Amen. Thank y'all for being here. God bless.